Eric Bieniemy had, I believe, a DUI. There was some sort of assault accusations and charges or whatever. And baby, but most notably, when he was at Colorado as an assistant coach, as the running backs coach, involved in recruiting, they had a scandal which caused the entire staff to get fired. The scandal was they had prostitutes for recruits. Okay, all you're hearing about Louisville, that had been done before at Colorado. So I I know that you think you read on Twitter and Adam Schefter, all Adam Schefter did was a solid for Eric Bieniemy's agent. That's how it actually works. I wish I could tell you that there was something more to it than that, but there's really not. And this is not to say Eric Bieniemy is a bad guy or or he is what his past of 20 years ago or uh, a slightly long, uh, slightly less than that, 18 years ago at, at Colorado, what that represents. But there's, there's two parts to it. First, the likelihood that he would be a candidate for the USC job is very remote considering what happened at Colorado. And then factor in, he wasn't even a candidate this offseason when the Colorado job opened. And, and we can do, the, you can do the whole, well, hey, you know, uh, he didn't want the Colorado job. Bull. Bull. Of course he wanted the Colorado job. It at least doubles, if not triples, his pay. It's his alma mater. It's in the Pac-12. Of course he did. He, he couldn't really get in there. Why? Because the last time he was at Colorado, it wasn't all his fault, but he was involved in a complete and utter disgraceful recruiting scandal. That's the reality of it. You want people to come and, and, and tell you BS on the radio and, he it's it's great like dude lewis riddick works for espn he used to be involved in front offices in the nfl and the lack of just google and do a little background research and go like yeah that's it it doesn't mean it couldn't happen but man it'd be tricky and then you factor in that the information i've given you which is nobody thinks he's a bad guy in the nfl but he doesn't call plays he doesn't work with quarterbacks right he they he doesn't do either of those two things. And when he met with various teams this offseason, I've talked to two different general managers who interviewed him this offseason, and they both had the exact same thing to say. Liked him. Liked him. People like him. But not a lot of specifics there. Right? Not a lot of specifics. So, again, it, it doesn't mean, and no one said he's a terrible interview, but their feel was like it was a lot of generalities. And when matched up against other candidates, they chose other people. But, like, we, we've gotten on this, like he's, like he's Colin Kaepernick, and, like, even the Colin Kaepernick thing, how many times did somebody go down over the last five years, like, you got to play Colin Kaepernick. Like, no, you don't. He wasn't a good quarterback before he... He took a stance against, uh, basically against the NFL and, and kneel before the flag. Like, was that part of the issue? Yeah, but part of the issue was like, what system could he fit in with? Did he want to be a starter? Was he willing to be a true backup? Like, all of these different things. I would be stunned, very surprised, if he's a legitimate candidate for the USC job. This is Eric Bieniemy answering the questions about the USC job. You guys know me. I am where my feet are, okay? So when it's all said and done with, I am focused on the task at hand. I'm not worried about anything where my name is being mentioned. My job right now is to make sure that we're preparing, all right, for this weekend's of, uh, opponent. So if USC reached out to me right now, my answer would be I am preparing for this team to play against the Baltimore Ravens, and that's how I roll. You guys know that. My job is to make sure that we're ready to play a complete sound 60-minute football game where we can come out and win the game. Okay. You know, I mean, there's there, – there's... That, that's that's great. Like again, all that is and and what it takes to be successful in college is not what it takes to be successful in the pros. And I do think there's a uh, there's a likability from players. Okay, likability from 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 players that um, that would resonate. Hey, okay? but 
Like I, I've, I've seen, I can't tell you how many different reputable news guys I've seen go, you know, Hey, I watched PTI last night. And you're like, okay. I mean, they, they were saying what a great candidate because he's worked with Pat Mahomes. Like, All right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if we truly understand. Okay. I don't know if we truly understand the complexities of USC at a major college uh, head coaching job. Remember, the local district attorney in 2004 said Colorado was using alcohol and sex to lure high school athletes to play on its team. All right. Katie Nida was on that team. There's just a lot to it. Okay. There was sexual assault. It was just a very, very ugly case. And again, he wasn't accused of doing anything wrong to a woman during those accusations. But he was very much involved in the recruitment of players, and that's, that's really hard to get away from. Okay? That's really hard to get away from. And then you factor in, like, look, this is the biggest job in college football that'll be open this weekend. I got Oregon people like, you know, why would, I, I don't think Mario Cristobal is going to leave Oregon, but if you think Oregon's a better job than USC, you're, you're kidding yourself. And I love Oregon and what they've been able to do facilities wise. And, but the, the point is guys want to play close to home. When USC was good, it had swagger. Oregon's got all the different things. The one thing it doesn't have is lo- it has locational problems. It just does. But we, we got we to gotta stop with the, like, I think what Schefter did is wrong. I don't think that's truly his job. I know why he did it, because that's what happens in our business, is somebody texts you and goes, hey, man, you do me a solid, I'll take care of you. That's how the hell it works. You send one tweet out, because remember, just read the tweet. And it says, league sources expect him to be one of the... It's like a completely innocuous tweet. Innocuous tweet. But everybody in football is like, oh, okay, I know what what he's doing. So we have to deal... What what sports have to deal with is the reality. Every program is different. Every hire is different. And USC, for example... Like, what you probably don't know if you're not in Southern California is they had a, for lack of a better uh, parallel, they had a, a Larry Nassar type of situation with an on-campus doctor that had nothing to do with sports that they've had to pay out hundreds of millions of dollars in settlements for. That's a real problem. That's the real reason that when Clay Helton was owned, owed $25 million, whereas Texas would just pay Tom Herman to walk away, they just, they, they couldn't do it. They didn't know how much the next check would be. But also what goes with that is it's really hard to hire a guy that has that in his background. Even if it, for your biggest job, for your biggest paycheck, even at a private university in 2021, it's difficult. Impossible? No. But difficult. So I, I think there's a reality to it, and I think we've all lost ourselves in this fascination over somehow he's been done wrong by the NFL. I, I've told you before, like, look, I am a proponent of the Rooney rule and the new Rooney kind of plus rule because so many of these coaches, I, I told you guys, I don't know, it was four years ago when I first started, hey, Brian Flores will be a coach, head coach next year. How do I know that? I talked to GMs that made the hires, and they're like, you know, he's not ready. He needs to run a defense for a year, but Brian Flores has got it. And that wouldn't have happened if not for the Rooney Rule, where all of a sudden now you have to find more diverse candidates in order to at least have a conversation, establish a relationship with. That's how the business works. You hire somebody you know or you on the recommendation of somebody you trust and you can't have those recommendations unless they've had conversations and gotten to know all of these people that that's how it works that's how it works in every business 
And so I'm not sitting here blind to the fact that you need more diverse voices and faces in front offices, but you haven't been paying attention to the fact that the NFL has already started that with several different programs and coaching staffs where there's different programs to get former players, uh, you know, on the staffs. But in the NFL, it is a meritocracy in its purest form. Decisions are made based upon one thing and one thing only at the very top. Coaches, players, quarterbacks. What's going to win me football games? That's it. What's going to win me football games and what isn't going to win me football games? Because if we win football games, everybody makes more money. If we lose football games, now I'm going to have to pack up my stuff, go home and tell my wife and kids we're moving and we're making less money because I got fired. So in the meritocracy of the NFL, which is screaming out for more diverse head coaching hires, the NFL was passed up. But instead of reassessing and evaluating, why would he, when placed against other candidates, not be selected? Why? Instead, we just go on this tangential rant, which has nothing to do with reality, about race playing some sort of factor. No, it doesn't. Like, I, I can't fathom that... People who do what I do only in a much more, um, like, I, I, I know the rules. I'm not a journalist. I didn't go to journalism school. All of those reporters, they all did. Like, fellas, let's have a little journalism here. Let's just Google just a second and go like, oh, yeah, he was at Colorado. How do you, how do you get over that? I don't know if you do. In college, it's really, really hard in college. Especially with the temperature of everything that's going on based upon the treatment of women on college campuses, which has been in so many ways wrong for so many years, and they're trying to clean it up. And, and, and please don't go running to social media and go, Godlieb said he didn't know. He was on the staff. This is what happened. He was part of it. And then he... Didn't want to te- he didn't want to testify before the NCA. That didn't reflect well upon him. That happened. The scorned wife who got millions of views. This is what being cheated on looks like. Her unfaithful husband. You're saying 1,000% this is because no sex in the marriage. If there was intimacy in the relationship, it wouldn't have happened. And a face-off. Well, woman number two is here. With the other woman. Speaking with her face-to-face is something that you want to do, right? Yeah. Come on out. All new Dr. Phil. Check your local listings. 